I'm Jean Ann Duckworth and welcome to A Life of Simple Joy. In this episode, I'm going to show you what we're having for dinner tonight. We're having pork tenderloin, baked potatoes, carrots and corn, all made in crock pots. Now you can see I have three different crock pots here. Uh, these were wonderful presents from my loving family who also likes to eat well. I have a large one I got just this Christmas, my medium one I got the year before, and my little one I got this Christmas. These three crock pots enable me to make all kinds of meals. And it's great because I can do it first thing in the morning and I don't have to think about it the rest of the day. So let me show you what it is I'm going to be doing today and step by step take you through it. And then we'll just kind of go from there. I'm not going to need my medium crock pot today. When I do a roast with baked or with mashed potatoes, I use it for my mashed potatoes. But we're doing baked potatoes today, so this can go over here. And in a little bit, I'll show you my station I have set up. I just keep these set up all the time. I pretty much cook in my slow cookers every single day. And I'll explain why as we go along. Uh, so, let me show you how to put this together, we'll get it cooking, and then later on I'll show you how everything turns out. I'm going to get started with my roast first. Uh, I'm going to do that in the large crock pot. Grab my tongs. I buy this this is only half of what I purchased actually I want that the other way I cut it in half and that way I get two meals out of it I try never to spend more than five dollars on the meat we have for dinner and I'm able to do that believe it or not let me grab a couple things here guess they're over here Want my mallet and a cutting board. Scooch this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. This is uh, four cloves of garlic, nice and peeled. You can use a knife, you can use whatever you have handy, but I like taking my frustration out on it. So I get lots of flavor. One thing you have to watch out for when you're simmering stuff like this is it's very easy to cook the flavor right out of it. And I really don't want to do that. So let me, there we go. So I'm going to put a couple on top of and then a couple in the pan. And then these, I think this was four carrots. Uh, I had stopped doing this, and then the other night, Mr. Diva said, why don't you do carrots anymore? So I thought I'd put some carrots in here. With it, there we go. Now, I shop at a store, my grocery store, where I get phenomenal prices on uh, produce so I I get the carrots what like four or five bags for a dollar I get the garlic uh, it's a bag of five two of them for a dollar so it's ten cents for a thing of garlic uh, clove of garlic the potatoes I wait for them to go on sale and then I buy I like for a dollar fifty for ten pounds and then I buy um, what uh, two, three bags. And we live in a really old home. Our house doesn't have insulation, so I store them in the pantry because the back wall of our pantry is an outside wall and it stays really cool in there. So let me, this is, as you can see, not the name brand. I do a lot of my shopping at the Dollar Tree and I use a lot of broth, chicken broth and beef broth, uh, cooking in my slow cookers. So I go to the Dollar Tree and buy, you know, what, 10 of them 
five chicken, five beef, uh, or maybe six and four, because I tend to use more chicken. I use the chicken with the pork, and uh, I just, it's, it's great. It adds flavor, it adds seasoning, it's phenomenal. Uh, why did I do, I wanted to show you, I did, I flipped the pork roast over because I want the fat on top so that it'll sizzle down. I don't always use all of this. This is a fresh one. And then I just do a little bit if I'm only doing the meat, but because I've got the carrots in there, I'm gonna try and get them fairly covered. There we go. Now, a little bit of Worcestershire. Just a touch of soy sauce. I use a low sodium soy sauce. I used to use the regular and then one day just found the sodium in it was kind of overwhelming me. So I changed over to the low sodium. Kosher salt. You don't use as much when you use kosher salt and I have to do my research on this. My thought is because kosher salt is coarser. Uh, it doesn't dissolve quite as quickly so it, it doesn't soak in. It adds flavor without overwhelming the food you're cooking. And then a little bit of pepper. And use garlic and season the way you want to for your family. Just remember, this is going to be simmering for a number of hours, so you need to do a little bit more than you might otherwise. Now, I take foil, nice piece of foil, and fold it in half. First time I did this, let me stop. First time I did this, I did the potatoes on the bottom and the meat on top. The potatoes came out really soggy. Mr. Devo didn't care for that too much. So I do this to kind of create a barrier. And then I have four pieces of foil. Do this here. I'm going to take my potatoes and just do a little bit one. Take the bigger one. You just kind of position them. I've already washed the potatoes. I poked them. Uh, if you're concerned, if you're not going to be cooking it quite as long as you might otherwise, uh, there are nails you can buy in the section of the store where they've got, um, you know, like spatulas and all the kitchen accessories, little tools. You should be able to still find them. You you put the, the nail in going this way in the potato so that a lot of the nail sticks out. The nail gets hot, the heat is transferred through the nail, and it cooks the center of your potato. That's that one. Now I'm going to move this over and do my little one. Oh, let me get my can opener. I use a handheld can opener. Oop. I try not to have too many different electronic devices in the kitchen. I do two cans and this gives me enough to have leftovers the next night. I might have to add an extra can the next night, but that works too. 
Again, these are going to be simmering for a number of hours. So I put just a little bit of the kosher salt in it. And now I add some of my chicken broth just for a bit of flavor. Shh, don't tell Katie. Now, how did I get started doing all this? Well, I write and produce the videos and edit books, and I would get up in the morning and I'd get really busy with doing my uh, business stuff, and all of a sudden it would get to be, you know, four or five o'clock in the afternoon, and I'd go, uh oh, dinner. And I'd be throwing something together, and it wasn't that good. And I like to cook, I like good meals. Uh, my family works hard. I like them to have really good meals. So it just really frustrated me. I got these ideas. I read different cookbooks. I got ideas and asked for, actually I asked for the little one. I had a big one I've had for years that we are, we're selling on Craigslist if you live in the area. <laughs> I asked for the little one and when I, we were out shopping, and Mr. Diva wanted to know, well, what does it look like? I showed him. And it was in a package with the big one. And I fell in love with the big one, but told him, no, don't, don't get that. I don't want you to spend that much money. Actually, the little one that was with the one like this was much smaller. And Mr. Diva liked this one better. So, ta-da! That's... What I got for Christmas and that's why I do this um, always experimenting trying things so that's how you put it together I did this in real time you got to see how it looks now let me stop this and we'll go over I can show you my crock pot station and we'll get things cooking and then it's just a matter of waiting a few hours and you can see how it all turns out let's head over to the other side of the kitchen Okay, this is the other side of the kitchen. The pantry is right over here uh, to my, well, across from here. This is just a dresser I have in here. And as you can see, I have my little crock pot station. I leave this set up all the time so that I'm ready because as I said, I, I pretty much cook in my crock pot every day. I do a lot of mashed potatoes so the red one gets used a lot. When I'm not, when I'm doing the baked potatoes like today, Lots of times I'll cook rice. We had talked about getting a rice cooker. Katie had wanted a rice cooker, and I really didn't want one more appliance in the kitchen that I had to find storage space for. So I went online and found a recipe for making rice in the crock pot, and it's phenomenal. I make a bunch of rice, and then I make fried rice out of part of it. So, like I said, if you're not doing something in one of your crock pots, Make something else. That's when you make soup or chili or, or something like that that you can freeze and put away. So here's the little one. I'm going to go ahead and set it on high for a little while. And uh, I'm going to set the what time is it? small one or the big one on high. This one lets me do four hour high, six hour high, and eight and ten hour low. So I'm setting it on four hour high and when it's done it'll just switch over to warm and that'll be perfect. I that should yeah, I think that'll do it. Now I'll come out and check it and if it's not quite right, actually I'm gonna go up to six. I usually do it a little longer. Um, the question you probably have for me right now, let me back up so you can see me. <laughs> The question you probably have for me right now is, okay, you know, that's great, you're at home, but what do I do? I'm not at home all day. It's easy. You do this exact same thing the night before. Take the crock pots and put them in your refrigerator. And in the morning, give yourself a couple minutes, have everything set up and ready, plugged in, make sure stuff is plugged in. It's easy with this big one because I can see that the light's on, but you have to make sure that these are plugged in and on. Uh, that's why I'd get up and do it first thing. Take them out of the refrigerator, put them on, turn them on, start getting ready, check to make sure 
that they're cooking and the way to do that is make sure there's condensation on the inside of the lid and you're off and running by the time you get home it should be done it, for the big one I do it on low I wouldn't do them on high if you're leaving first thing seven eight o'clock in the morning you're not going to be home till five and you don't need like the veggies cooking that long on high so just do them on low and let them cook on low all day uh, and that should work out great for you you come home and dinner's ready now we're going to leave this be for a few hours and I'm going to hold my family off in a couple hours for a little while and show you how everything turns out what it looks like when it's all done and how the meat just falls apart and how tender it is which is great because I'll tell you the advantage of cooking it this way when it's ready and you can see for yourself so let's go do something else for a while and let these guys work okay if you look at the clock behind me you can see it's been a few hours and everything well it smells done so Let's take a look and see how everything turned out, and I'll show you how it is uh, I deal with the meat. Okay, you can see the condensation on the lids. That starts very early. Let me move this one over. And the corn. Mmm, smells good. very hot very very hot get the potatoes out of the way Always use this broth to make gravy. It makes great gravy. Mm. Only wish you could smell it. It smells very good. have to watch out for the garlic in here. See, pick that out. I'll eat it, but I don't think anybody else in the family wants it. And get the garlic off of here. Take the bit of fat off the top here. All right. It is so tender, it just falls apart. And I'll tell you, if you're wanting a roast that you can carve up and serve in slices, this isn't it. Because there will be no carving with this. My hands are clean, I promise. See? Pork tender, and I just I pull it apart, kind of a pulled pork. So that's fine. darling husband always stands oh hot hot yes yes it is very hot and you can see whoop, 
nice and tender. So, there you have it. In a few simple hours, we have a pork roast, baked potatoes, carrots, and green beans. You've got your entire meal right there. And it was very easy to do. It just took, oh, I don't know, maybe half an hour altogether, if that, to get it uh, all set up and ready to go. Like I said, if you have to work the next day, set it up the night before and put it in the refrigerator and just put it out uh, and get it cooking before you leave for work. Just make sure you do it early enough so you can check and make sure that everything is cooking. That's all I have for you this time. Mmm, yummy, yummy, yummy. I'll see what it is we're having for dinner in the next couple of nights and show you what we do then. In the meantime, I'm Jean Ann Duckworth for A Life of Simple Joy, reminding you that the good old days are the ones you're living right now.